Hi, I'm Kathy. And I'm Tom. And we're here to share ideas about how each of us can live smart. 365. So welcome to our, the latest edition of our vlog. And today we're trying something new, which is kind of what we're setting out to do with this whole vlog thing anyway. And that is, we're going to have a, a few guest speakers. Um, we're not going to necessarily interview them, but we're going to intersperse them in a portion of this vlog. So please stay tuned. Um, and they're going to offer some ideas about our topic, which is, where do we go from here? I don't know about you, but I know Tom and I have been doing a lot of thinking about, okay, this is happening now. But what happens next? I don't think we're going to return to normal anytime soon, if ever. So what, do I, what would I personally like to see unfold in the days ahead? I don't know. What would you? <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that. What okay. about you? Well, that's an interesting title. I, I mean, I remember when we talked about that, and all of a sudden I'm searching around on the Internet and trying to think about that idea, and I came across uh, Martin Luther King's book, his last book that he wrote before he uh, was assassinated in 1968. Um, but it was about where do we go from here, and it said chaos or community. And I think we're on that precipice again in a large way. I mean, he, in 67, some major things happened around, uh, especially the U.S., about equal rights. And I think we're now, this is another time that we're in, in chaos, where we have, right now, we have a pandemic chaos. Uh, we're having, we're moving into an economic chaos. Uh, we've been in a climate chaos, but it's sort of like we can ignore that because we've been so comfortable. So I think what we need to do is, is that, that idea of what's normal, do we want to return to that? I think we need to wake up. I think we need to wake up to the idea that that's not going to return to the normal. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> so. So anyway, I have a couple of ideas. For me, um, what I would like to see more of in the days ahead uh, would be uh, more of a focus on what really matters. I write about it in Right Sizing all the time and, and simple living kind of ideas. And uh, what, it, what it means to me, what that means to me is uh, a focus on what's really important to us. A lot of us talk about, oh, you know, I think, you know, family and relationships are important and yet we spend hours and hours at jobs we hate and we're away from our families. Right. Well, now the pandemic has given us an excuse to be at home with the people we say we love the most. Um, what's that, that famous quote that says something like, uh, nobody on their deathbed wishes they had, you know, spent a little more time at the office. Um, in the end, we really do value our relationships, and I want to focus on that. I want to remember that and have my actions precede um, or follow through on that idea of what really matters to me. Well, and that goes back to the book, Chaos or Community. I mentioned chaos a second ago, and now it's about community. Um, and I'll just fold it back in again. Is we're in this pandemic chaos, what's happening now, the communities are coming together because we're in this together. It's a global thing. It's just not, you know, we're dealing with it in America. Um, it's also economics. It's a global economic now. We can't go back to normal to where we are all isolationists. It just, it doesn't work. We can't do that health-wise. It doesn't work. Politically, we're in chaos. But right now, we can come together in community and we can make changes in so many positive ways that... Um, I'm excited about that, that we're not going to return to normal. Especially if we work together, I think we can. Yes. Yes, yes. And that's what community to me is all about. Right, right. Now, my, my other thing that I would like to see more of is I would like to um, return, not return, but put a greater emphasis on our values. Now, I know a lot of people say, you know, I'd live my values and I'm comfortable with that. But I think most of us find ourselves on kind of a slippery slope. Like you, you've mentioned before, Amazon. Amazon makes it really easy to order things and we can order things. But do we recognize the true cost of what those things are? Um, I'm the kind of person that I... I like to get a good deal. I like to bargain. I, I grew up with a family of horse traders, and so I like a bargain. And sometimes I'm so busy working for a bargain that I forget that some people deserve a living wage, and they don't get a living wage if somebody's out there beating them down and grinding them down for every last penny, and they're trying to sell it at Walmart or whatever. Right. Um, 
So I want to live my values more congruently in the future, and I would like to, especially as a country, as a, as a, as a, you know, just as a people, to say, yeah, this is important to me. This matters, and I want to live that value, not well, just give it lip service. Well, and the way to do that, yeah. I find, is is every time you spend a dollar, think about it that you're voting for whatever you're doing with that dollar. So if you're going to support whoever, you're going to hand them a dollar, and you're saying, I support you. I mean, we have the power to put a business in or out of business just by voting with our dollars. We can do that with politicians. We can do that with oh, spread across everywhere. So what matters to you right now in this, in this pandemic right now, we decided that, that it's time to spend some of our dollars on the food banks, you know, and maybe give a little con contribution to the, the local businesses in ways we can by a little more tips because the restaurants are just really struggling right now. So there's lots of little ways we can do things locally besides globally and not, not overwhelm ourselves. And hopefully that'll just expand in the future. So I'd really, really like to see that. Now, what about you? Do you have anything else you'd like to add before we go to our guests? No, I'm, I'm pretty good. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up in a little bit. So. Okay, so please um, take the time to listen to, we have four guests for you. Please take the time to listen to them, uh, their ideas. And here they are. Hey, this is Eric Corey Freed. I'm an architect here in beautiful Portland, Oregon. Uh, and I was asked the question, where do we go from here? And I'd like to think that where we go from here is we start to question some of the assumptions that we've had over the last century. Where we can go from here is we could start to rethink some of the things that we took for granted around transportation and materials and building and carbon and fossil fuels. Where we go from here is an opportunity an opportunity to really rethink everything and design it in a better way, in a way that's equitable to everybody, in a way that's meaningful to everybody, in a way that's healthful to everybody. I think that's where we go from here. Um, Aratunde Roy wrote in an article recently, she described pandemics as a portal. And she said, and I'm paraphrasing, but she said, you can either drag with it the baggage of the past or you can go through the portal light, ready to fight and reinvent the future. And personally, I'm, I'm really looking forward to inventing that new normal and inventing that new future. And hopefully you are too. Hi, I'm Carrie Henwood. I'm originally from Australia. I'm, well, I have many labels. I'm an integrated healer. I use earth-based medicine techniques, meditation, um, to ultimately get people to their highest potential. So where do I think we're all going with this? Oh, my goodness. I hope and pray that we're going into uh, a new way, a new world, uh, a, a place where there's not diversity, a place that we consider each other, a place that we consider our environment, our children, our education, our um, ecosystem, our communication or lack of communication. I mean, literally, I believe that we are coming into a moment in history, especially anyone that's alive on the planet now, this has never happened at such a degree that it has happened to everybody simultaneously around the world, we are mostly sheltered in place. And I had an interesting uh, observation about that. It's um, a, a imposed spiritual retreat, which can lead to a lot of anxiety for people if they're not used to being alone and haven't really looked at their emotional aspect of their life. It threatens people financially, but it's a, a beautiful opportunity to, you know, dig down deep, to uh, self-evaluate. Where do you stand? Where do you sit inside yourself? What, what is your future? What does it look like, you know, to, to perceive yourself in a different way in the world? To how would you fit in this new world? So it's an imposed spiritual retreat where that we can bring out our humanitarianism, our compassion, our understanding, and here goes us to the new world. Thank you. Hello, Kathy, Tom, and all of your conscious viewers. I'm Scott Cole, wellness expert here in Palm Springs. Yes, the pandemic has taught me a lot of things. Um, 
and affirmed many of the things that I already knew, that uh, I want to protect the planet Earth. So that's my first thing. I'm hoping that people will come through this and through our isolation, uh, connect, reconnect with nature and understand how important it is to address climate change and, and all of the things that the Earth is, you know, understandably unhappy about due to human consumption and oversight. So Earth, number one. Uh, number two, I'm hoping we all come together as humans. Uh, the divisiveness has been awful. Um, and the hatred has, levels of hatred have been awful coming from the Trump administration and how that's affected all of us, relationships, um, each other, the way we treat each other. So, but I have to point out protesting uh, misogyny, anti-Semitism, homophobia, and racism, protesting that is not hatred. And being angry at people who promote that is not hatred. Hatred is racism, misogyny, anti-Semitism, <laughs> homophobia. So our work is cut out for us to be conscious, loving human beings and, and become more empowered to really stand up for the truth and what is right, much like had to be done uh, when Hitler was around. So these are, these are major times and coming out of the pandemic, um, I hope we emerge more powerful. And my third thing is healthcare. It, it could not be more obvious that we need wonderful, easy, cheap, um, effective health care in this country. I mean, we are so far off base. So I'm hoping that uh, all sides come together and understand that. So, all right, lots of love. Everybody stay safe during these challenging times and uh, peace be with all of you. Thanks. And last but not least is our longtime and close friend, Deb Gordon, who is a senior minister at the Kelowna Center for uh, Spiritual Living in Kelowna, BC, Canada. All right, so where do we go from here? So we're experiencing uh, an absolutely untoward time in every single person's life on this planet, which I think is a profound thought unto itself. And if any of us ever thought that we were uh, not connected, that we weren't one, that borders mean anything, that there's places where things start and things stop, I think this has been the opportunity for a giant reset for all of us to know that we are inextricably bound together, that there is a connection that goes throughout humanity that we are being shown right now at this time, which is hopefully the peak of things when we're taping this actually, that we cannot disconnect from each other, that there is a oneness that is inarguable. And where do we go when things, um, I don't think for a moment there's any normal that we can say we're gonna get back to, but things are, what do they say in that great book, you know, this has come to pass. And I think myself, my, my faith, is that this experience has come to bless us. Because for sure it has slowed, slowed us mostly down. For myself, I've never been busier, but I can tell the planet has slowed down. It is truly a great pause in where we are, given all of us the opportunity to rethink, to reconsider, and hopefully to ask, how do I want things to be different when we are allowed to resume at whatever level that is? And I think with that um, maybe newfound or uh, newly embraced thought of oneness, that we will move into a, a world that is more filled uh, with compassion, if not love, that would be my greatest hope, and more peace because we have that regard of that sense of oneness. Uh, in our uh, Center for Spiritual Living this Sunday, where the main message is called, uh, the rest is still unwritten. And so that's where we are. So I think it's a time of powerful choice. And I know for myself, I want to remember that I am the creative agency in my life. And whatever I'm thinking now is going to, be uh, helping to forge whatever my future is. So my personal call on myself is to focus more 
on that world of peace that is in true potential, that world of love that is possible, and a world that I hope to God truly recognizes its oneness and its unity, and together we are one. So that's, that's my point. So what did you think? We had great fun um, talking to our friends about this idea and, and, and sharing them now with all of you. And I happen to personally agree with all of them. But the point of this talk isn't necessarily, or this vlog, isn't necessarily to get your agreement. It's instead to get you to think about what would you like to see? Where do you go from here? Um, I think collectively we have a lot more power than we give ourselves credit for. And I'm a big one. I believe in intentionality. I believe that we co-create our future. Now that doesn't mean we can control the virus or that we can control other people, but it does mean that we can influence our future in positive ways. It, it also means that we can influence, you know, we can get involved and make changes in, in a lot of different areas, like in politics and in community and living our values. And, and all those sorts of things. I say again, think of think of every time you're making a decision. Is it going to create chaos or is it going to create community? We do that with our families. We do that with people we're surrounded with and stuff like that. And I think it's time to right now is is when going back to Kathy's idea about values. I really think it's important that we pause, breathe, and really just try and calm down a little bit because they're saying right now we're, we're we're really anxious and i think one of the things is can we be a little kinder with each other mm -hmm. and a little more patient with each other i said we're sitting at home and a lot of people are getting more tense of being at home but if i can be kind to a little i got to remember when i get a little stressed I get, you know i'm starting to mm. so can i not only be kind to other people but can i be kind to myself i mean we we are hard on ourselves more than sometimes other people so for those of you that are really tough on yourselves just breathe a little more Breathing is good. <laughs> Breathing is good. <laughs> Breathing is good. So thank you again for joining us today. And please, please um, share your thoughts about what you would like to see in the future. Where do you want to go in the future? Um, either show them here on, on uh, post them here on um, YouTube or on the blog or even on Facebook. Um, let's let's put positive intentions out there where we can all go. Um, I, I believe we can head this off in a, a good direction when things finally calm down. So where are you headed? And again, give us some feedback. Yes. Thanks so much. Until next time. Bye. Bye.